Okay, here's the part we're going to make. Uh, we're going to make another in cap. Um, we'll have a threaded hole, put some text on it, and uh, this is what it's going to look like when we're finished. So we'll start a new part. And on the front plane, we're going to make the flange. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a center rectangle, draw it to any size, and we'll smart dimension it. And it's going to be 1.85. It's going to be square, so we'll make both sides of it 1.85. And we're going to draw a circle. We want it to be in line with the origin. And we're going to smart dimension this circle to 1.1. And we're also going to smart dimension from the center of this circle to the center of the square to 1.5. And now we're going to draw a couple lines. So you'll grab a line. And we're going to draw it from the circle to this corner. Don't grab the quadrant. If you grab the circle, it'll make it tangent to the circle. So we'll draw one to that corner. And we'll draw one to that corner. And we're going to use trim entities. And I like to use power trim. And I can just drag through both of those lines that I don't want. And we can also get rid of all of these, really. We don't need them anymore. And because we're going to mirror this entity, we're going to mirror these three lines. Now, first we need to do draw a line from the origin vertically down, and that's what we're going to mirror about. So now we can grab these three lines mirror about this line and we'll accept that sketch and now we can delete this line that we mirrored with and we'll go to features and do an extrude and we're going to extrude this a half of an inch and we'll accept that sketch Now we're going to do another sketch on the front plane. And if you go to view orientation, we can look at the back. And we're going to draw a circle from the origin. And we're going to smart dimension this circle to 1.85. And this is going to be a mounting face for the cylinder to rest on. We're going to extrude this a really short amount, 0 0.005. 5 thou should be good. Oh. And we wanted to extrude that the other way. So if you go into Edit Features, we can reverse the direction of that extrude by hitting these two arrows. Now it'll extrude it the other direction. Now we'll accept it. And now we have a little flat surface there. And we're going to do another sketch on the front plane. And we're going to draw another circle on the origin. We're going to smart dimension it to 1.435. And we're going to extrude this, reverse the direction, we're going to extrude at 0.435, and we'll accept that. And we're going to make a groove around this extrude for an o-ring to fit into. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a revolved cut. 
So we're going to do a sketch on the top plane and go to view orientation. We can go normal to and we're going to use convert entities and we're going to convert this edge to our sketch and that'll put a line there on our sketch and how I'm going to do this because I find it to be pretty simple I'm going to smart dimension a line out here anywhere to 0.15 and so I can line it up with the midpoint I'm going to draw basically a construction line coming out from the midpoint so I'm going to use move entities and I'm going to move that line using from to from its midpoint to somewhere on that line and we'll accept that and now we can get rid of this and we're going to smart dimension from this line to this line point one we'll grab a line and we'll draw a horizontal line from this endpoint to the outside edge and we'll do another one here now I can trim away these outside parts of the line and we're going to draw one more line to revolve our sketch around from the origin vertically go up any amount so we'll go to features and we're going to do a revolved cut if you select contours we'll select that box and our axis of revolution is going to be that line we just made um, it's showing you this cut on the outside and that's because thin features is checked and if we uncheck thin feature it will cut that square that we made and we'll accept it now we want to do a sketch on the right plane we'll go normal to and I'm gonna draw a box you could do it with corner rectangle I'm gonna do it with lines um, I just find it easier. So we'll draw a horizontal line, and if you touch on that endpoint, you'll get a dashed line coming out. And we'll draw a vertical line that's lined up with that dashed line. Connect it and finish our square. And we'll smart dimension this line up top to two and a half inches and now we're going to round off the top and we can do that with the perimeter circle that allows you to select that edge that edge and that edge and it'll center a circle and they're touching all three edges of that and we're going to trim the corners away and this half of the circle and we're going to go to features do an extrude we'll look at the front of it uh, we want it to extrude in both directions so instead of doing blind we're going to do mid plane and we want it to extrude it 1.85 and we'll accept that sketch and now on the top plane we're going to make an extruded cut so we'll do a sketch on the top plane go normal to and I want to cut a rectangle out of the center of this piece and I want it to be a certain distance down from the flange so how I'm going to do it 
is I'm going to draw a line from that endpoint vertically that way, and I'm going to draw one horizontally this way. And that just allows me to select that endpoint for the corner of our rectangle. And I'm going to smart dimension these to 0.5 and 0.4. And I'm going to grab a corner rectangle. I'm going to go from that endpoint down to this line. And I'm going to smart dimension this to 1.05. Now I'm going to go to features and I'm going to do a cut extrude with that square. I want to do it mid-plane and it's going to cut at 1.85 uh, make sure it cuts all the way through the part you can always increase that to make sure you go through it so we'll accept that sketch and now it's starting to take shape um, we're going to add the text now. If you wanted to put a part number onto this part, we could open up a sketch and we'll place a sketch on that plane. And you can choose text. We'll call this part one. And you can see here it's showing you what it's typing out and we can position it after we finish making the text and we want to uncheck use document font so we can change the size and if you click on the font button I'll bring you to this page you can change the text font and font style and size. We're going to use units. You can also use points to change it, but using units it'll show you how big it's getting. Since this flange is 0.5 inches thick, we'll go ahead and make our lettering 0.35 and we'll accept it. Now we're going to move entities and you want to uncheck keep relations because there's a relation connecting it to the origin and we'll use from to from there and we'll place it where we want on that face and now we can go to features and do an extrude um, we don't want it quite that far we'll actually do a point oh one It's actually, we can make this 0.02 just so we can see it a little better. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a draft on these edges so we can get it out of our mold. If it has these straight edges, it might be kind of difficult to pull out of our mold. This one probably wouldn't be too hard, but we'll put drafted edges on it. So if you click draft, you can see as you increase the amount of draft, it starts angling those walls. Um, we can actually use 30 degrees because we could use a 30 degree uh, engraving bit to cut that. So we'll accept that. And now we have our part. Uh, this is what it would look like when you would forge this and we'd actually drill the holes later so you should save this part and save it as your forged end cap one because we're going to make two end caps so you can save them as one or two and uh, save it as forged that way we can get back to it later and that way when we make our mold you won't have to 
worry about either deleting the holes or messing with it. And now we'll make the holes in it. So we're going to do a sketch on the front plane. We'll go normal two. And we're going to do a circle, a center point circle, in line with the origin. And we're going to dimension these circles to 0.5. And it actually didn't have to be in line with the origin because we'll put a relation on there to make sure that they're sitting in the right spot. If you click on one of the circles and click on the arc that it's sitting next to, it'll bring you up to a relations page. And we want that circle and that arc to be concentric. And that makes the center point of this circle in line with the center point of that arc. And we'll accept that. And we'll do the same to the other side. So select that circle, shift, click on that arc, and we'll hit concentric. And we'll accept that. And we're going to do an extruded cut. And instead of blind, we can do through all. That'll go all the way through the flange. And we'll accept that extruded cut. Let's see, we want to reverse the direction of that. There, now we'll accept that extruded cut. And now we have two holes for bolts. And now we're going to open up another sketch on that face. Because we're going to cut a hole through both of these parts. And we'll go normal to and we're going to draw a center point circle and we're going to smart dimension this circle to 0.75 and we're going to make it concentric with this arc so you can select the circle hold down shift click on the arc and we'll choose concentric and we'll accept that and we're going to do another extruded cut Make sure it's going the right way. We're going to do through all. And we'll accept that sketch. Now, we're going to make a port hole for the hose, the hydraulic hose to screw into so it can push hydraulic fluid into the cylinder. So, we're going to do a sketch on this face and we'll go normal to and we're going to use uh, let's see now we're going to use hole wizard we don't need to be in a sketch we can just click hole wizard and hole wizard will make you a threaded hole and we're going to use a straight tap ANSI inch and we're going to choose the size we want it to be a half inch there's two choices there's a half by 13 and a half by 20 that's coarse threads and fine threads we're going to use half by 13 and we're going to use blind and since our part going through that is 1.85 thick, we want it to go at least halfway. An inch will work. And now we can go to position. And position will let us choose that face. And if you put it right under the origin, you get the dashed line. You can hit escape and we'll smart dimension the center of that hole to this edge of our part to 
half of an inch, 0.5. And now it's going to make a tapped hole through our part. We'll accept it. It won't actually show you threads, but it knows that it's a tapped hole. So if we make a working drawing of this, you can easily call it out. And if we look at the back, we want to do a sketch on this base. And we're going to draw a center point circle straight up from the origin. And we're going to smart dimension this circle 0.25. Now you just want this circle to be into that threaded hole. And it shows you a dashed line where that threaded hole is. So that's sitting in a good spot. And we're going to do go to features and do a cut extrude. So you can do up to surface, and that brings you to a box that asks you to select the face or plane that you want to extrude cut to. And we want to go to the inside wall of that threaded hole. And that will cut right up to that surface. So we'll accept that sketch. Now we have a hole going through there. Alright, and there's our part, and now you can save this part as your machined end cap 1, so we'll save as, say machined end cap 1, and that's it for this end cap.